Today's lesson is about holy water. Here I have a little plastic bottle of holy water, and it's got an image of Our Lady uh, of Knock, Our Lady of Knock from Ireland. And it's regular water, but it's blessed. There's a more elaborate blessing, but I use a simple blessing. As a priest with the hands that are blessed, I put my hands over the water and I say through the intercession of Our Lady of Guadalupe, St. Josemaria, St. Michael the Archangel, and St. Joseph, may this water be blessed and drive away the power of evil from anyone who uses it. So it's good for us to bless ourselves a little holy water every day, and especially before you go to bed. Sprinkle a little bit on your bed, and it'll chase the devil away. Say three Hail Marys for the virtue of holy purity. And I can tell you, holy water really annoys the devil. And that makes me happy. And you're going to say, okay, well, where's this in the Bible? Well, it's not. Yeah, yeah. Where's that at in the Bible? It's not in the Bible anywhere. <clears throat> in fact, uh, there's an obvious difference between uh, regular water and spiritual water. Right? I'll just make a quick point of this and move on. But um, it, Jesus says, He that believes on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow ri rivers of living water. Now, this is not a literal, it's a spiritual. Uh, uh, what I do, uh, oh, I, I see. I went waters, didn't I? Okay. So let's see what, what else Jesus says here. Um, so there's a, uh, excuse me, there's, you know, this woman, a Samaritan. Is this the same thing here? I got to read now. Uh, yeah, he, and he says, give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. So Jesus is talking to uh, this the, the Samaritan woman, and uh, he says that if you would have known who you're talking with, you would have asked to have the living water. So there's living water, and then there's, you know, regular water. The woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? And She says, she continues, she says, Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank thereof himself, and his children, and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whoever drinks of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinks of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water, springing up into everlasting life. And, of course, the woman says, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Jesus said unto her, Go, call thy husband, and come hither. And, and this is a great story, right? And the woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. In that said, Thou truly. The woman saith unto him, him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Okay. So anyways, well, the point I want to make here is this here, verse 14. But whosoever drinketh the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. So the water that Jesus gives us is a spiritual water. And that spiritual water is in us that are saved. And this water is a well of water that springs up into everlasting life. So this is um, a clear example of eternal security. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. And how can you have peace if you have fear of losing your salvation? Well, you should have no fear because you have the water of life in you that springs up into everlasting life. You shall never perish, okay? So, <clears throat> I just want to make that point clear. It's in you. So, Jesus is in you. And he cannot 
he will not uh, leave you nor forsake you, right? All right, so uh, that's just great story. So let me, I want to show something else kind of on that similar point here. Okay, so I had a, this this woman here, she says, uh, you know, once saved, always saved is Satan's deception. So I, I got curious. I thought, well, what? I thought I'd ask her, so what must I do to be saved? So she's going to preach the gospel to me now. She says, my advice to you is pray to God in his Holy Spirit, for his Holy Spirit, excuse me, to guide you, to direct you, to straighten your path. Read the Bible, especially the book of Proverbs. Read the New Testament carefully. If you approach it with an opened heart, willing to be taught, our Heavenly Father will teach you. God bless you, and may his joy be upon you. So she went from somehow trying to teach the gospel to how to learn the Bible. She kind of drew away from the question, which is, what must I do to be saved? So she essentially says, if I pray to God, uh, I'm not sure if she's saying read the Bible as part of being saved, but just praying to God, you know, that's what the Mormons do. You ever catch them in any sort of, uh, you know, conflict or whatever, they'll say, oh, just pray. Just pray about it. Yeah. So, so just pray to God, you're going to be saved. That's basically her gospel message. And I, I asked that question on purpose uh, because that question is, is asked in Acts. If I can find it here. Um, and right there. Let me scroll down here. In Acts 16. And da, 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 I might as well just start here. And brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. So, According to the Bible, it says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the gospel. According to uh, this lady, pray to God. So I'm going to take the Bible over what she says. It, it's kind of sad because I don't believe she has any idea what the gospel is. And if you don't know what the gospel is, how are you trying to to discredit once saved always saved when you yourself don't even know what the gospel is it's quite astonishing really good morning everybody i know it's dark i like it that way <laughs> yeah she likes it you know she I'm knows it's dark up early it's... and she likes it that way all right that's no that's an interesting way to start out a video she knows it's dark, and she likes it that way. There, a Bible verse. And this is condemnation, that light is coming to the world. And men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. Men loved darkness rather than light. Good morning, everybody. I know it's dark. I like it that way. <laughs> yeah. Interesting, huh? 